Welcome to another edition of Unlocking Website Success. I am Ellie McBride. Um, I am the founder, CEO, whatever you want to call me, of Calibrated Concepts, and we focus on websites and simple business systems for micro businesses to make day to day is easier. Today we have Peter Doak here. Uh, Peter and I connected, I think, originally on Instagram quite a long time ago. Um, and Peter is an expert in digital advertising. And so I really wanted to bring him on today to talk about things like paid adverts. We've actually had a couple of clients in uh, common. And so like I've gotten to see snippets into what he does. And he is very good to talk to about this stuff. And I'm going to be very upfront and saying this is probably the conversation that I know the least about behind the scenes. It's probably the area of this converse- of this series that I've probably done the least of as a DIY attempt in my own business. So I'm really excited to learn from Peter alongside of all of you. And um, that's pretty much it. Peter, thank you so much for being here and for bringing your expertise. Um, would you like to introduce yourself and PDG Advertising? Absolutely. Thanks, Ellie. Um it's really nice to be asked to come and talk to you on your on your series. I've always enjoyed all the uh, work that you've done and that I see on Instagram and on your on your pages, and so much so that I was really happy to be able to work with you on some uh, projects for some of our uh, customers, and they're really happy. And I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about some of the stuff um, that we've done there later on. But I. Um, um, the owner of PDG Advertising. It is a little advertising agency uh, based here in Portadown in Northern Ireland. And uh, it's it's been, it's existed for eight years. I realized a few days ago that um, it was like an anniversary of eight years of working more for myself than I ever have for anybody else. So the, the last proper job that I had, I was in it for something like seven and a half years. And then whenever the eight year anniversary of working for myself and building this business um, came, I was like, huh, that's pretty cool. You know, you- uh, That is you, really pretty damn cool. You think that it's gonna, uh, you're gonna close within weeks of opening and eight years later, you kind of wake up and you're still still here. and. And what, what I've been doing for those eight years is um, my passion and it's communication and technology. And, and that really manifests itself for me in trying to help businesses um, get more customers. And how we've done that through the years has, has changed, um, but it, it more or less follows a, a pattern of you know, Google ads, meta ads, um, email marketing, uh, TikTok ads, uh, Taboola, Outbrain ads, anything that's paid to drive an audience uh, quickly. Um, we, PDG, we have, you know, about 14 regular customers over a year. Some come in and some come out through the year with different things happening. Um, we... They, they're all over the world. They're in Australia. They're in Canada, America, here in Europe, South Africa, um, all all corners of the of the world. Uh, P- PDG actually stands for Peter Doak Global Advertising. Uh, when I started the business, it was called that exactly. It was called Peter Doak Global, but I figured that was a little bit too self indulgent, so. Has shortened it down to PDG and it kind of stuck, and it's something that we've kind of uh, grown with. Um, those customers that I mentioned, they are in different sectors like e-commerce, health, and education. And um, it's not just myself. Uh, I have a little core team here in Portadown of uh, Ethan and Becky, and then we have some wonderful contractors uh, around us as well. And and, and our day is really just spent, you know, figuring out what the best um, foot forward for our customers is in terms of the online world and in terms of uh, digital um, advertising. Uh, and and that is that is what I spend my time doing, Ali. Very, very good. I had muted myself because 
I thought that was probably the proper thing to do because I tend to be noisy no matter what I do. Um, but I think that that's really, really interesting that you are able to have such a global impact with what is a relatively small client base um, and that you're essentially choosing to work in a really intimate and sort of, um, I guess, really, really impactful on a business by business scale. And I'm, I know we've had the opportunity to work together and it just means that like, say our mutual client in America is just able to touch base with both of us. And it's a really interesting thing because you're obviously from here. I'm from there, practically you know, very close to, to him and still living here. Um, so it's just, it is really, really interesting the, the way that online business has brought us forward, has brought connections forward and has brought PDG advertising into such a unique space i really like it i there's some i don't know whether it's a glitch in my brain or something like that that just makes me really love um like don't get me wrong i really enjoy here northern ireland like i enjoy ireland i enjoy the uk that that those this group of islands that islands that i live in i really really love it i really like it uh but uh, I love travel and I love um, other cultures and I'm fascinated by other cultures. I'm fascinated by my own culture. I'm fascinated by other languages and other other things as well. And I feel so lucky and grateful that we live in a time where the internet can connect us up in seconds with, you know, people from all over, all over the world. And there's a reason for it in my business. It's, there's a couple of things. I, th I think if, if you become insular and you only service people that are like you or people that are in your local local area, I feel your world becomes small and you don't get the benefit of all those experiences and people and ways of doing things. And and, and that's really important from a, uh, you know, uh, business standpoint to, to reach out to different areas and find out about them because that creates a little hive of experience in my in my agency. But more so, I can look at it similarly with, you know, the industries that we work with. So we we don't work with just uh, e-commerce or just health or just education or just mm -hmm. technology or just finance. We work with a, a mix of different customers because just like in different cultures and different languages and different experiences, there are opportunities to be had by mashing all of those together and learning from each of them what what works and and what works well and, and there's a phrase that i'm grasping for at the moment but the the whole is greater than the sum of the parts or something like that you know it's 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 important to have different perspectives and different experiences so it's it's wonderful uh, to be able to work with those um different customers across the world but also it's equally weird that you're from there and here and that we're working with a customer together across the across the pond so yeah yeah, like an, an Amer like somebody in based in California, and I'm from. For those of you who don't know, I'm from Oregon. That's like right above California. A lot of times, I live in Northern Ireland, and a lot of times, somebody's like, "Oh, where are you from?" And I'm like, "Oregon," and they're kind of like, kind of like the one above California. Because <laughs> if I just say Oregon, and this is a a perspective of the U.S. that happens quite a lot, but it's pretty much like Florida, New York, California, and nothing else exists. Yes, that's it. Um, mm -hmm. So. So I'll tell people it's the one above California and they then sort of understand where I'm from. Um, okay, so we're here to talk about paid advertising and web. So for somebody who has never touched anything about what you do, tell me, like, and the very basics, what is paid advertising? Yeah, um, it's interesting. Whenever you ask, you know, you really get to know what the words are and the the words really are 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 important so paid advertising is i would call it almost like a cheat on any other type of advertising i would call it an accelerator i would call it speed um specifically it's let's say you have your website on google um or you have a website and you want people to to know about it who wouldn't normally uh, and you want people to, you know, engage with you or 
go to your website to take some sort of action. We pay platforms like Google, Meta, um, you know, any other paid platform, TikTok or, you know, Taboola, Outbrain, those types of ones to get your audience in front of people who might not know who you are, but might want what it is that you that you have to have to offer. And each of those platforms that I mentioned, like let's say Google or Meta, they all have, you know, a back end that has a you know configuration system where you can pay money and get your advert in front of people who otherwise wouldn't know wouldn't know who you who you were. So the difference between maybe let, let's say the equivalent of having a um you know advert in a newspaper or even taking a back a step handing out a flyer to someone in a in a street uh, the difference really is scale and speed and hyper targeting so hyper-targeting, these platforms yes. you know they know about us they know who we are they know what we do we've got these phones on us all the time that track where we are and what we're looking at so our profile on the internet is something that advertisers like me go in and pay to get in front of of those of those people it, it's it's very creepy and it's where my world uh, lives most of the time thing is is so i'm gonna have two comments that i think will hopefully bring this conversation really in focus and in relatability to a lot of people first off all of us have received targeted advertising you've been on your instagram account or your facebook account or Twitter or whatever it is, and you've got an advertisement for something. And I think the thing is, is you're right, it's creepy. So it knows for me that I like to look at ethical drinks. I get like an absurd amount of advertisements for like kombuchas or like non-alcoholic spritzers. (laughs) And I drink alcohol. I don't know why I get so many of these. But um, I get a lot of like ethical type clothing ads um and because it knows me it knows that my i i choose certified b corporations over anything else it knows that i'm willing to spend a little more money if i believe in a company's ethos like it knows this stuff and it sends these things to me occasionally gets it off where it'll be like a really trendy tiktoky dress and i'm like "Mm." but mostly it gets it right the other thing is is it knows who i spend time with so it knows that my husband lives in the same house as me and it knows that overall women tend to be the people who spend the money in a household and so it advertises me things that it thinks he will like (laughs) so there are some things that you've probably all experienced um or things that you started talking about with your friends and somehow the internet knows um i know there's all these myths out there i don't even know if they're myths sometimes they're myths depending on your devices and your tools that you're using in your world about your devices listening on you. Sometimes it's probably true and sometimes it's probably not, but they do know everything regardless. So that's one thing that's hella hella relatable. We've all had the internet go, you should buy this thing. And sometimes you just buy it because it knows. And I've heard that TikTok is particularly good at this. I don't have a TikTok. (laughs) But um, no, I don't have a TikTok. I don't think I'm gonna get threads. Um, We will see. But because a lot of my Instagram crew and my Instagram community is sort of flocking there. And the only reason I'm on Instagram anymore is for the community. I don't even post to the grid anymore. Um, But the other thing that is really interesting that I want to say is if you've been running an online business or any kind of business for a couple of years, especially if it was at least four plus years ago, you will know how often Instagram has been like, do you want to boost this post? Do you want to share this? And then they will try to do the like targeting for you, right? They kind of give you some really basic parameters to put in and you pop it in and it like sort of works, but probably mostly doesn't. Um, Because I, for example, who've done this, I'm not you. I don't know how to actually make that successful. Um, So those are, I think, our experiences that a lot of like, people who've been in business for a little while have probably had both the like they've been targeted and then you've maybe tried to play with targeted ads or boosted posts in things like Instagram or Facebook or 
uh, Pinterest. I did a Pinterest targeting ad once trying to, when I was doing uh, Squarespace templates actually a couple of years ago. And it was really good for attracting people. It didn't actually convert very well. And I think to convert very well, we would have had to make some good changes and we'll get into those in a moment because I have questions. <laughs> but, but my point is, uh, I guess, a beast that most of us have had some interaction with, even if we haven't tried to deal with it. Like if we haven't tried to become an expert like yourself in it. I, I think um, so, so much there, like the, the, the TikTok uh, algorithm you mentioned briefly, it is, it has learned from all of the 10 years of meta hyper targeting. And as meta has Faded ever lately, Facebook and Instagram, TikTok has come more addictive um, and uh, brings you down that filter bubble rabbit hole very, very, very uh, quickly. You, you're right. Um, there's, I, I think with any type of advertising, it's not easy. It's not something that's that's easy to, to do um, quick quickly if you've never really done it before. And, and the platforms do a very good job of making it easy to press a button that spends money with them. Um, so boost this, it's, it's, it's easy, it's fine. I, I, I might go to this example a couple of times, but my father runs a driving school here in uh, Northern Ireland. And he um, does does ads on, on Facebook and Instagram. And um, he's, he's pretty tech savvy he's not he's not he's he's pretty he's pretty good with with the technology but he one week whenever he was boosting some of his posts on uh facebook people pass their test and he takes a photo of them everybody's happy and smiley and it's an amazing post to go out there because it shows social proof and good business and this person can actually do what they say that they can, can and do. then their granny sees it and shares it or yeah shares exactly. it. it's it every every i always love that example because it's so perfect it, it just hits all the right buttons for a for a facebook post so what he what he has done is he amplifies it a little bit by boosting it on on facebook and that's a lot of people can be quite down on boosting on facebook i'm not it's horses for courses like you can you can utilize it in, a, in an example like that to give a, a organic post a little bit of an edge, you know, a little bit of boost into the news feeds of other other people. But um, he did it wrong. He he sent the post. Uh, he boosted it to people in uh, England rather than here in Northern Ireland. So the the system didn't bring him properly through. You know, this is how you do this. It's it needs to you need to be because there's there's no point advertising our driving lessons to people in England whenever we're here in, in Northern Ireland. And believe me, that's a that's a very small example that happens all over the place in very big businesses of a, a mismatch of your desires of where you're supposed to target and where you actually um actually target. So I there is the certainly is, a learning curve on that. Yeah. I think the thing is, is a lot of these types of software services, et cetera, even a lot of them are built, designed, and grown in the US, even if they have contractors and company, you know, there's a lot of HQs based in Ireland. There's a lot that are in other places in the world. Um, that said, it seems like a lot of the driving forces of a lot of these big companies is in the US. And I, the US is not known for being extraordinarily globally competent. And I, what I mean is are, are socially, politically of other nations. So for example, we recently applied for what is known in the US as a petition for an alien relative. It's the first part of getting a green card for your spouse when you're outside the country. And we, my husband's born and raised here in Northern Ireland. And we put in to the US government, they received a form that said, or his birth certificate, his birth certificate says Northern Ireland and they say, we need one from the UK or from Dublin. And you're like, that's not how that works here. So we literally had to like submit a letter that explains how the British Isles work, right? <laughs> so I think that there, when, when a nuance is, some people don't know that Northern Ireland is technically its own country, that it's part of the UK and a part of Ireland, but let alone any politics involved with that. It's hard I don't know how you explain that in any way, except for doing a huge letter or maybe 
Maybe I don't There's know. There's a YouTube video that's quite good at it, actually. <laughs> you can send people. It's got a map and it says, these are the British Isles. Yeah. This is Ireland. This is the UK. This is Great Britain. And it does like oh. all these circles and it explains why. But it's it's about a four or five minute video that I don't think I could send my immigration attorney. <laughs> um, <laughs> but my point is, is that when the nuances like that from other countries are complicated enough it's it's hard to explain it to an algorithm. It's hard enough to explain it to say, some, like someone like your dad who's trying to click through his way to make that algorithm function for him. It it can be yeah, it can be quite a lot. Yeah, you know, you also you get things on the like you've been doing. You know, you're you've been working on your business for so long, Ellie. That there's there's probably things that they just don't you know, that, that come kind of naturally to you because you've spent the 10,000 hours or whatever it is to become competent on what you're doing. So th there's things that yeah. you, you might, that it's not in the guidebook of Meta or of Google. It's stuff you just you just know. There's, there's a really interesting one as well about um, scaling campaigns on uh, ad systems. So on Meta and on Google, um, we have had campaigns, whenever we first started, we had campaigns that, we're doing well, and when I say well, um, it's important to be able to track what you're doing with with anything. You know, I suppose the example is if you want to drive people to a certain page on your on your website, um, and you want to use a, a Meta or a Google advert, um, you want to know that you can track the actions that those platforms have taken on your website using analytics, or or maybe separate that web that part of the website out so no other traffic is getting to it, so you know the effect that the um, Google and Facebook traffic is is having, but if if let's say you wanna, it, whenever we had a campaign that was going well and it was achieving maybe you know we would spend ten pounds on a day or, or ten dollars on a day and it would make you know thirty dollars and the customer was very happy with that. It meant he was getting good profit and that and it was all good. So the first thing whenever that golden moment happens, which is the moment that we're looking for, whenever you know customers making money and is happy. Um, everybody starts to think, how can we scale this? How can we make more money? Because $10 per day is completely feasible if we're making lots of money. But if you suddenly push up the um, spend on the campaign, if you push it up to, let's say, $100 a day, you want to go crazy on the, on the campaign, that campaign can completely break and tank and won't work because of the action that you've taken to push more uh, budget into it. I have no idea why. I don't know why it is. It's just something that I know from working on the platforms for, for so long and going through the pain mm -hmm. of trying to discover that, where if you're going to do something like that, like scale your, your campaigns, you want to be increasing by about 20% every three days or so instead of going big bang and, and all out. And those are some things that you know, you just don't know from um, trying it out once, once yourself, and not yeah. to labor it. And I there's guess, some things that in every industry that are sort of that like unwritten rule book, right? Like the the things that you don't know unless you know the the unknown unknowns. But the the reason why it's important is, you know, you're not going to get it right on the first go with paid advertising uh, i will openly tell customers there is no way that we're going to crack this on the first go with your with your business because there's too many factors there's so many different interest groups there's so many different targeting options there's so many different creative options there's so many different website parts of your website that we can send them to that we won't know that we need you need to test and have real patience whenever you're doing pet ads because you start off and it feels exciting because you can cheat the system, pay pay money and get traffic into your website that maybe hasn't had it. But when it doesn't have the impact, you then get disillusioned and you think this isn't so this isn't so so good. Um, I don't know why this hasn't worked. And sometimes you feel a bit dumb where you're like, this has not worked and it's my fault. But but actually, the the real trick is patience, testing, and you know make sure you can track and look for the successes in, in what you're, what you're doing. So if you were to start talking with some, with a client and you were going to say, okay, like, obviously this is on a case by case, there are goals all set out, all these types of things, but say 
let's just use me as a case example because I don't have anyone else to pull from. But for a case example, like I have a new service that I'm launching in two months. It's called the Simplicity Solution. Um, this is the first place I'm talking about it publicly. <laughs> but essentially, it's going to be bringing back some of that stuff I did as a tech virtual assistant, but at a higher level. I'm going to be help walk. Essentially, it's systems and simplicity coaching for small business. Um, and I will be doing that alongside of my website design. So if you're going to be talking to somebody like me, like how do you get the word out for somebody? Like how do you choose the right platform, the right demographic, the right, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think my biggest struggle is that I work on it like you yourself is on a global um, with a global audience. So targeting by location is not something that really works for me. Um, but I think, yeah, I just would be curious. I think what I'm getting at is if somebody were to be like, all right, like I want to get like the trial run of this done myself. I want to get my hands dirty. I want to figure it out before I hire someone. So I know have a little bit of a know-how before I get somebody who's an expert, because I think this is one of those things that like, in business, there's so many things you could like get your hands dirty and do yourself. But this is one of those things that you can get your hands dirty, do it yourself and have like moderate success. But if you ever want real success, you're going to have to get somebody who really knows what they're doing. Um, and it's not something you can, in my opinion, like half ass. <laughs> so um, I just want to hear, yeah, I guess your thoughts kind of around where someone should get started. Yeah, it's a great question. The it actually doesn't, I don't believe it differs so much from person to person, business to business, industry, industry to industry. You've got a new service, or even if you had a, if you had the service for a long time, you, you, you've you got something that you want other people to pay for and to, to do. So step, step one, and I'm smiling because you're, you're in the room. You, Ellie, and anybody that's listening is in the room where we work work this out. We call this room the fishbowl. So I don't know why we call it the fishbowl. It's maybe because there's glass here and there's glass in, in front of me. And it feels like whenever myself and the team need to work out uh, the plan for a new uh, client, we will um, fishbowl it. And that means we come into this room right here. And we put ourselves in the position of the customer. We put ourselves in the shoes of the customer for, for a moment. So we sit and we just go, if I was Ellie and I had a new service uh, that you know helped people with their systems and their processes, something that I desperately need, um, you know, what what would be my first steps? Where where who am I and where do I hang out online? Where where is my attention uh, right now? Where do where do I do that? And Let's say we were fishbowling right now. If I had to hazard a guess, I, I'm, and I speak from personal experience, I know that I have put into Google um, a search term of process management, of system ma systems management, teams management, um, efficiency in processes, uh, all of those different keywords that you know equal um, you know probably what your services uh, do for for that. So. If, if in my head I know that I'm in the room and I, I do that and I go onto Google and I search for those things, then immediately my head goes, I want an advert in front of those people that are searching for that. I want to skip the queue of anybody that's organically showing up and I want to put an advert uh, on on there. So in, in terms of in terms of where to go to, um, th there's many, many options. But the first step, in my opinion, is to literally try to mirror what a customer would do. What, what would they do and where would they go and how can you interact interact uh, with them? Um, I would love to touch on the other other networks. In, in this example, you know, you really want to just find the people who need what you have and but who wouldn't normally find you and get in front of them. So I think there's a really great opportunity on LinkedIn to do that for, for this particular um, service ads are very expensive on on LinkedIn, um, but they could be uh, beneficial specifically for for this. Um, now, that's phase one is on Google and on LinkedIn, getting in front of people in the first instance. So that's important. Possibly on Meta, you know, why not? There's business interests there on Meta of mm. you know uh, getting in front of of people. 
and then uh, Twitter too, paid advertising on Twitter as well. And then also on, on TikTok for, for sure. Why not put a little bit of uh, budget in there? And there's two things I just want to want to say about that. One is you don't have to spend a fortune. Like you can start off with a couple of dollars per day on each of those platforms. You don't you don't have to spend ten dollars or a hundred dollars or ten grand on, on that. You can go really micro because a click maybe gonna cost you about 50p or 30p or, or so to get a to get a click on one of those adverts. So you definitely don't have to go go massive. The the online advertising space is a great leveler because you can get in front of people and so can Coca-Cola or so can you know Nike or, or any of those other other businesses. So you can go small on that. But getting in front of people first is, is really important. But here's the thing, it's not going to be successful on the first pass. You're not gonna you're not gonna get every click is not going to be a be a customer. There, there's a certain amount of brand awareness and you know, getting in front of people. And I see it as a five tiered uh, system. One, get in front of people that might be interested. Two, whenever they are interested and they, they go to your website, pixel them and then retarget them as they're floating around the internet, you know, look at pictures of cats or whatever it is that they're looking at on, on the internet. Then three, uh, send another advert with an offer or something that gets an email address. Four, follow up personally on, on email. And rarely, uh, if a hundred people go through that that process, will you not see maybe one or two people that are are interested. After that, rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat and do it over and over again, and and basically prepare to fail for about two months on this, and then start seeing some gold and start seeing some people that are coming through that are actually interested after after testing it out over yeah. over time. I think that's something that is really easy to as so i've tried and failed at a lot of things in business i think anybody who's been doing this for some time has you try a service you try an offer you try a a thing and it doesn't quite go the way you plan it does um but i think that's the thing is that because there's like it's funny because i failed at other business in in, like uh business investments and been okay just sort of being like for the most part, there's been a handful that I haven't. But when it comes to advertising investing, it feels different. And it's so, I don't know, there's so much of to it because there's some of it that's probably my own personality and some of my own values. Um, so I don't want to muddy the waters too much with that. I have a question later for that. But I think there's something that is very much like, it can feel very sticky to spend your money with these big corporations that and know that for the first while it probably isn't going to get you anything because you're training yourself you're targeting the right people and you're training their algorithms to help you target those right people yes I agree 100 percent. feels wrong feels horrible feels feels absolutely diabolical and um if if you spend with the platforms and you don't get any return from it it's gone it's not coming back like you've you've literally you've literally you've you've spent you've spent that um the only the only thing there's only two things that kind of kind of save it um one is um brand awareness is in a in a busy world uh never a bad thing someone knowing about your business you know building up that small little fleeting connection with someone where they've heard about your business um, is, is very, very valuable. So um, it's hard to quantify and it's hard for that to be, to be uh, tangible. And the only effective way to do that at scale, especially globally from one place is going to be on those, you know, online uh, platforms. Um, also, it's the marketplace, you know, it's, it's just the mechanism to accelerate. Like you, you can contact every person that you think you can manually go in and contact every person that you think might be interested in it, but the cost time benefit ratio is, yeah. is too, too low or high for, for, for me. So being able to bypass that and get in front of a bunch of people on mass is, is very strong, but, but I tell you what, you really have to have your world in order, you know, if you're going to do paid, paid ads. So your website, uh, as we were talking about, you know, recently, um, 
it has to be on point. Like there, there's literally no point in spending any money on ads if the place where you're sending them to is garbage and it doesn't work. Or there's the, yeah. the amount of times I have come uh, started working with customers that have been doing paid ads, the landing pages where the form doesn't send the email anywhere is is mind boggling. And we're not talking like small businesses. We're talking huge global corporations that are spending thousands and thousands of dollars on those pet ads and they're going into the website and literally they're they're wondering why they're not getting any leads and it's because no one has tested the form and it's going to the mm. ether of nowhere and they end up not getting the the business that that they want so um yeah there, there's a there's a lot to it and unless you have your, your world in order um you know it, it does make it very difficult to justify spending on the on the adverts and it doesn't help that these corporations are, are huge and also have done some pretty shady things over over time yeah i think that the thing is, is at the end of the day whatever form of marketing you're doing the end it is to drive people to whether it be brand awareness which br all these things eventually mean sales right there's lots of smaller goals you can have that eventually mean that people spend their money with you and it was a very good point you made about brand awareness because i know for sure that one of those it's funny i tell you i get these ads for <laughs> totally because i actually click on them because it knows um but these for these non-alcoholic like semi-wellness type drinks and one of those is trip i don't mind yeah. name dropping i get it all the time but do you know what i wouldn't do a hole in a barrett to pick up something else the other day and do you know what else i walked out with it was a trip it was on this call with me last time like so it clearly works um, to start getting some, into somebody's head and start getting your messaging and why you matter um, in front of somebody because even if they're not going to buy through that ad, they still might buy. Yeah, the the you would I I totally see what's what's happened there because I consider myself arrogantly and incorrectly that I am immune from ads that are on my system. So I thought, yeah, I, I'm not I'm not ever gonna because I I do these ads, so I'm never gonna get pulled into an offer or anything like that. There was a business that did um, Facebook advertising. There's a lot of, with the ad platforms, there's a lot of like companies that have sprouted up around the, the ad platforms that say that they can do your ads better. So a little piece of technology that you can plug into the Meta or Google ad account on your website, and it makes the connection better where it gets ads faster or more, more robust. Over, over time, I've, I've learned that that's all garbage. You must go native whenever you're working with the platform. But rec not recently, maybe a few years ago, there was a YouTube advert that was just so well done. It kept on every time I was coming back to YouTube, it would come up and it would be a different layer to the story of their business about how they had helped mm. customers and agencies get more value for, the for their clients. In the back of my head, I know it's garbage because I'm working plugged into the system and I know that you can't game the system any more than what you can do, what you can do natively. But yeah, I went for that offer because I was like, all right, you got me. And it's... It's really powerful whenever you look at it from a show people and, not all of them. and get in front of them repeatedly. Yeah. And what I mean is, is not all of them are bad. Sometimes I've gotten ads for companies that are these gorgeous micro businesses that are semi-local. I've got, there's one uh, that I have like a hair pin from that unfortunately my hair is too slippy to use, <laughs> but it's beautiful. And I got it because I kept seeing the ad. There's this amazing Scottish whiskey that is small, brewed, completely carbon neutral, ethically. See, this is what happens for me. You can sell my, my niche here. What, you know what is getting to me. But the bottle, I, I put it on my Christmas list. Paul got it for me. Um, and it's something I still enjoy um, now, like a year and a half later. So they're, they're not all bad. Um, it's just, so it's not always getting, I guess, sort of tricked into something that you know like you were saying doesn't and maybe work the way that yeah. you expect it would work true and um, sometimes you get ads for things like sometimes you get ads for things you know you already use all the time i get ads for vinted and i'm a vinted addict <laughs> so sometimes it's it's but it is people paying to play um and so my i guess my question is so we know there's like a million different places to choose there's google which is important because that's how people are searching there's youtube which is an extension of google uh in a weird way but it's video based more you have like the meta world um you have twitter you have pinterest which is such a visual um, and different experience i know a lot of people who sell the reason i tried there is because when you sell 
um, templates, people are often Googling like Squarespace, um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Inspiration or whatever, yes. kind of in that world where you're like looking for that, that visual thing. Um, people often would say maybe something like a digital or, or a freebie does fairly well on something like Pinterest, especially if your target demographic is a millennial woman because we're all on Pinterest, right? <laughs> so um, um, those kinds of things. So how how do you discern where to start? It, 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 it's not it's not easy. I, I have a bit of a uh, focus on Google at at the moment, just just because it, we're we're really mastering that area. Um, so the, the intent is so, so high, um, on meta people are not on meta to purchase. They are there to be mm. entertained on Instagram and on, um, Facebook and the other uh, areas They're they're there to communicate with people, find out what other people are doing and be entertained at times they're, they're there to sc- to doom scroll for, for a while. So the. If, if I compare that advert, putting that advert in front of someone compared to on Google, where they've literally typed in that I'm looking for this right now, and this is exactly what I what I want, and I'm, I'm shopping for for this, similar to Amazon ads, you know, you're even more hyper targeted in Amazon if you're searching for for something, you know, because mm. you're you're in that shopping mindset on Google, you're even you're even a, the, the intent is a bit a bit less, so. For most things, I can't think of any business where Google isn't a valuable weapon to start with and to understand the audience. So yeah. even for any business, I can say Google is is probably probably important. Um, there is a you know you mentioned about the millennial woman. You know if if you know that that's your target demographic, there are you know you will and millennial men as well. There are certain adverts and certain creatives and beautiful creatives and products that just lend well to you know um their uh things so it it can depend on what your what your product is but if i was taking that step back and you know working with a new client i would definitely sit down and say what are your customers doing where are they where do they hang out and here's an here's another absolute trick asking the customers that you know already where they are what they do you know having a mm-hmm. picking it sounds ridiculous but picking up the phone to 10 customers and saying you know we just wanted to chat about what you do where do you where do you find your your similar type products and things like that and that little thought can in, instead of you guessing and trying to figure it out you know going back to the source and going back to the people and saying you know where do you hang out what do you do online um what what do you search for what would you search for if you were looking for product x um, is very is very important. So that I market think research work. is so important, so important, and it can be such an easy, like hard thing to like nail. But I think it's so, like I just got through a market research piece for this this service that I'm offering, um, and I tried to follow like the mom test, where essentially you didn't ask them any direct questions; you just asked them lots of open ended, airy fairy questions, <laughs> so that they can't lie to you and say that sounds like a great idea, right? Um, but I think you're right. Like asking your clients almost, I think the thing is, is a lot of times that can feel really intimidating, but more often than not, people are really, really, really happy to share. Right. They just like, people love to know that their opinion is valuable. Um, in the way society has gone over time, like we used to be very, very community based. There's a hunger in people, especially post pandemic for community. So anytime you can do anything like that, like, don't be scared of it, people. Like, your your people are going to answer you. And I feel like as a side thing is if you can incentivize it, it's not that people don't want to do it. It's that we all live busy lives. So I tend to incentivize it with, like, I'm giving out three gift cards to a small business of your choice. So I will raffle off anybody who is willing to hop on a call with me or whatever, I'll raffle off some gift certificates. And it's not because these people wouldn't get on the call anyway. It's because life's busy and it means they'll get on the call tomorrow. Right. Yeah. But. The the search for that information is really the game. So on understanding what your customers want and how to put something in front of them that matches that 
is is there's there's no there's no cheat to it there's no trick to it there's no playbook to it it's just something that takes time to understand and time to to test out and, and time to to figure out with uh action mm. and all of that will help you do what you talked about earlier which is mirroring what that searcher would do and whatever platform that would be highly likely google right because they sort of run the world um but yeah i think so that's interesting so my question is so we've talked about it a little bit this but is why paid so we've talked about how it's an accelerator how it's sort of a cheat code um how obviously it does take a couple of months to get going but once it does it's going to be very very different than say the slow build of this youtube channel or the slow build of word of mouth or the slow build of networking or even potentially the slow build build of something like affiliate marketing, right? It's going to be very, very different to all those other beasts that we use in businesses. So I would love to hear a little more. So it's like building for the future cheaply. So if, if I have, if I sell candles, and I have 50 candles to, to sell. There's no other way that I can think of it to do it better than to um, get an advert up on Google Shopping or on Amazon to say this candle is is available. And in an afternoon, I can get that I can get that product in front of 50,000 people for about 20 quid. Um, and not that candle, I can get that stock level of candles in, in front of people. So the ability to create an advert and get it out there um, is accelerated for sure with, um, with, with paid ads. Now, it's not as, there's other forms of traffic that will come to your website, like organic traffic. That's people mm -hmm. that type in and bypass the ads, which most people do um, because Nobody likes ads. I don't like ads, but they will buy them too. Yeah, they buy <laughs> those ads. But it doesn't mean they don't show up here. <laughs> yeah, and then they'll um, go to the organic traffic. That's super intent. You know, the intent on that is really good, so it's more valuable. But it takes a very long time to build up that that kind of traffic. Um, in an afternoon today, tomorrow, you can go on Google Meta and make it very easy to um, create those those campaigns. Um, so. Uh, you can get in front of a huge audience very, very, uh, very quickly. The only thing that you're sacrificing for that uh, time speed up and that hack is cash uh, money. And um, that's another point I would suggest to fail quickly and cheaply in online advertising because um, before you know it, you can run up huge bills on those mm -hmm. um, ad accounts. I've heard horror stories of thousands of pounds being run up by the platform. Um, without the user knowing about it. So um, it's important to understand how to manage a budget and how to look after um, a budget. I, I think the, the key is to monitor it very regularly, like literally daily, and know where the on-off button is on the ads. I think that's important so that you can you can turn them off whenever you, mm. you, uh, you need to. Um, also, I think communicating about it, if you are interested in doing ads or you're interested in you know trying it out for your for your business like reach out i i know a lot of advertisers and a lot of marketers in belfast northern ireland across the world i don't know any that wouldn't have a 10-minute conversation with someone about their ads without expecting mm. you know to uh you know be paid for it or to do that i maybe i'm maybe i'm wrong about that but uh, certainly for me or uh, I can recommend some people to talk to about it as as well, where you know just reach out and um, talk talk it through before maybe trying it on your own and maybe getting it a bit bit wrong or a bit off. Yeah, totally. I think the thing is, is in everything I've talked about, and this has come up several times in the series, but it's something I talk about a lot in my business. Is there is this trinity right of like where we spend in our business, and it's you're either spending time, money, or energy. And you have to choose really strategically if your business is going to succeed, where you're going to spend those things. So essentially what you're saying is for the increased brand awareness, for the increased um, sales and in the like medium term. So SEO, as we know, 
we've talked about this in other ones as well, like a minimum of six months before it really starts taking over. It's really a long game and it's really truly like a years on years on years thing. Um, but before you see real results at all, you're looking at a minimum of six months. So you're saying that in a month or two, you can start having results with ads, which is quite a bit different. And it's obviously probably going to be where search engines are like directly for someone who's looking at a very specific thing. You're looking at people potentially, depending on where you're marketing, people who are looking at maybe a more general thing, but end up looking at the exact right place. Because you said that somebody's looking, instead of saying somebody who's looking for ethical organic candles made in Glasgow, they're saying ethical organic candles UK, and it just is coming up, right? Uh, t- totally. And what you're saying about the month or two months or so, that that's it could be quicker you could do it quicker but the, the thing is you're not going to master it and you it's it's not the it's not the platform's going to take time it's you're going it's going to take time for you to figure out the movements of the ad platform you know how much to put in on any given day who to target at uh, what locations to to target do you go full country or do you go um or do you go very local down to a uh, uh, postcode or, or zip code um, something that's very important as well, um, I believe another one of those known unknowns by me of just over time understanding understanding it, um, doing an advert on Meta or in Google that encompasses two countries, like let's say North America, let's say Canada and the USA, I believe that confuses the algorithm. And I believe that gets you less results than if you separate it out into two different uh, countries. So interesting. Yeah. So let's say you wanted to do Europe. You knew you had a product like a, like it really comes to its own in SaaS. You know, whenever you're advertising for online platforms, because they don't test necessarily have borders except for the language in in each of them. So it might be reasonable to send an English advert all across uh, Europe. Not totally advisable. If you're doing it right, you would do it in each different different language but mm-hmm. Canada and USA is a very good example of if you put it across North North America the algorithm doesn't work so the, the campaign might not get any results might not get in front of the right people and might not do that because it's trying to cross a border in cyberspace and I believe mm-hmm. that it doesn't doesn't like that and I know that we would never do that here now but you would never know that until you had um, right. seen the seen the testing of doing it doing it both uh both ways um and hopefully that's a tip for someone out there well i'm sure it is because you've got to think that like even if you're looking at so maybe your niche just because (laughs) maybe this is just youtube videos i've watched lately but like say digital nomads so let's say you're looking at digital nomads um that are coming from primarily native english speaking countries and you're trying to get them to say go to croatia or portugal and all these places that are sort of recruiting digital nomads (laughs) right now like you could think make the mistake of thinking you can just send ads to all those places that people like natively speak english and you're targeting based on the fact that they work from their laptops that's a really i could see a really really easy mistake that you wouldn't even know you were making yeah absolutely can you mention portugal i think we have a shared love of uh portugal of lisbon (laughs) and pastel de pastel de nada Oh my gosh, they're so good. I think it's, it's because when you were down in Dublin like a couple months ago and you literally posted some and yours with the wife said I had to bring these back. I was like, where that, are you these? Been to that cafe <laughs> in Dublin, uh, Lisboa? I did. Yeah, I went when I went in March a couple weeks after you posted that. Yeah. Um, I've also, there's also one over that by, I'll have to tell you, there's a new one, but um, that I don't think is as quite as like trendy, but still very, very good. Um, awesome. But uh, I digress. See, you can make connections over all kinds of things. Not just... <laughs> but um, so I guess my thing is uh, originally, I think my thing against and uh, against my, my business doing digital ads was like the like, OK, it's a big thing because if I'm going to pay for it, um, I'm going to have to pay someone who knows what they're doing and then I'm going to have to pay for the ads. Right. And as a service based, it, it just didn't seem to make sense at the time. But I think the other thing is, as we've talked about, like my personal brand, personal values, which then leak into my brand values because my business is me, it are, is really to support small, it is to support ethical, it is to support 
diverse. It is to support uh, carbon neutral. And so it's like, I think running ads goes against a lot of my personal values. So I don't mm. really know how to reconcile that. No, or that, if it's that's, possible. That, that, is, that is impossible to reconcile running meta, va- meta ads against sound moral values i think i i don't i don't think those two those two uh, exist it's very difficult to hand over money to such a huge or organization when you know the the only the only thing you, you get into an ethical argument about it the, the only thing that i can maybe say in its defense possibly is are they were they too big did they become too big too quickly to be able to handle being ethical, and I, I don't know if that's even a legitimate argument. It's the only one that comes to comes comes to mind. But I, I would certainly agree. It's it's very if if you want to if you want to put ads if you want to get business and put ads on on any of the big platforms, uh, you could certainly make arguments that the, that it's not the most ethical way to to do it for for sure. I would definitely agree with that. Yeah, I think the other thing though is is I have I have this total two wars devil's advocate thing too is that as we've talked about a little bit already, but I have found several of my most favorite ethical brands because of this, mm. right? Like and getting within like just TMI Tuesday on a Friday, like I ha- wear like weird like underwear that are like made from trees. <laughs> I found them on Insta through I'm pretty sure through an Instagram ad. Uh, they're compostable. <laughs> Well, I, if you, I, my weird organic carbon neutral whiskey that I like, like, um, that's like sort of my special whiskey to be fair. Like it doesn't, <laughs> sits on the shelf. I don't touch it as much as the others, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> the bottle's beautiful and hand painted and stunning. Um, but some of these things, like I've picked them because these ethical companies have decided that reaching out to the people that are going to spend their money with them through maybe not the most ethical channel was worth their while. Right. Um, And it's worked. It's, it's a very tough one to to reconcile. It's like, so social, social media and ads, could you combine, could you compare them before there was Facebook, Instagram and, and Google, like before that there would have been the phone, the telephone and the telephone used for all sorts of things like that aren't, isn't, isn't ethical, but is it, you know, do do you not use the phone because of because of that? I don't even know. Right. If that's Are you good... not spending your money with say yellow no, pages I, I, or it was? I, I agree it that now? it's it's perhaps <laughs> the worst <laughs> argument against uh, for it because I there's no there's literally no uh, there's no justifying. Um, it's it's a tough one. I agree. I would prefer small uh, ethical uh, businesses in this but world. The, I haven't before... seen it. Just this yeah, but point. before this, like you were saying, before this, the advent of the internet, really, you would have still been spending, if you were a small business, you would have been spending money on the yellow pages or the white pages or whatever mm-hmm. it is, depending on where you lived. You probably were spending money to be in your local newspaper, which some of those are propping up massive, horrible corporations in themselves. Some of these yeah. newspapers are owned by massive, horrible corporations. Yeah. So it's, it is, I think it's just an evolution of the do, game do that is... Do you know what as well? Yeah, I, I really learned something on that because you know it, you do as an advertiser you do lose it. You know you do lose that. You can lose that um, that ethical awareness of of the ads. It, to me, it's it's not even a second thing, and it's it's weird. It's a bit like it's a bit like Sea World. You don't see it. You don't you don't you don't see it until you're reminded of it or you're you're told about it. And, and actually, oh. you know, it's an it's an important uh, it's a very important. Um, Point and something that I'll definitely be taking away from this conversation that you know we need to, we need to think about that and we're currently doing our strategy for the next quarter and for all mm-hmm. of those things and um, I, I think uh, I'm really glad that we talked about that because uh, I'll certainly want to include it in our in our work. Oh, I'm really glad to hear that. Well, we're about well we're exactly at an hour, so I would love for you to tell people where they can find you so that uh, we can. <laughs> have everyone move really. on with their beautiful days you should be able to anybody that wants to should be able to google peter doak and you'll find a bunch of stuff on there you'll find our website you'll find my podcast the pdg advertising podcast you'll find all of our social channels on twitter on 
on a LinkedIn business is called PDG Advertising. Our website is PDG Advertising. Uh, dot dot com and and I really appreciate Ellie you making the time for us to um do this today it's it's awesome as I said we have really benefited at PDG from your work um and your business's work on our uh customers I I can think of one at the moment where the website that you uh, developed up has um and built has uh continuously been generating leads for that customer in California. It has helped my business because we know you and it's been really uh, useful to have, to be able to work like that together. Oh, thank you. It's been really good to work with you as well. I think when people essentially, it can just be such a, like a, I don't know the word I'm looking for. Essentially when you have people in complementary fields that you can trust, right. To share people. When people ask me a question about that, I'm like, I don't know, go check out PG Advertising Instagram because that's not a not in my wheelhouse, right? Um, and so it's one of those really nice things to have other business owners that you can really trust. I don't know, have we actually ever even met in person? Don't think so. I think we, I think we <laughs> uh, connected in COVID. Type of things. Um, um, one of those networking networking things. And then uh, you've been on our podcast, our video cast business conversations uh, before on phone calls but at some point um we'll we'll catch up for sure yeah absolutely it's so funny because i know you've worked here in my co-working space before and that's where oh, I am you're the minute. in there I'm right like now got it hiding in this little like <laughs> uh glass pod place that's such a cool space awesome. <laughs> so yes i have we'll get in uh, people who've been on my linkedin recently will notice like i have been like really geeking out over this is my phone <laughs> so that's that's my phone and i've been playing with these little clips that you can just mag safe here and have a much much nicer webcam so anywho well thank you so much for joining us today everyone Pleasure. like peter said you can find him over at peter doke or pdg advertising obviously with what he does it's pretty easy to find him if you look a little um and he is just a wealth of knowledge him and his company are fantastic so thanks to you everyone for joining Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye-bye.